Um, hi, uh, I'm Vignesh from College Tongo Jafar, and this is part of a series of youth mental wellness interviews. It's a collaboration between the Oxford Cambridge Society of Malaysia and the Global Wellness Institute. And today we have Dr. We have Dr. Jerry with us. He's a chair of the Mental Wellness Initiative of the Global Wellness Institute. So, uh, hey, Jerry, how are you today? I'm very well, thank you. I'm speaking to you from Perth in Western Australia, and you're in Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia, right? Uh, uh, no, I mean uh, Perak in Malaysia, Stiawan. Oh, you're in Perak. Okay, yeah. you're out of school, of course, which is a state of Malaysia. And Vignes, you've been accepted into Cambridge University, Emmanuel College. Yep. Uh, and you'll be studying medicine at Cambridge once That's Cambridge medicine. reopens. Yep. Hopefully you'll start in October. Yeah, we hope. So you've got some questions for me. Yeah. Okay. So the first question is, um, so uh, Dr. Jerry, can you enlighten us on what is what what does the word when uh, well-being actually mean? Well-being uh, really refers to people um, living uh, in a dynamic state where they're able to develop their full potential to work productively and creatively, to build strong and positive relationships with others, to contribute to their community and to feel happiness and fulfillment in what they're doing. And um, there's a big focus on this at this time of COVID-19 uh, with people realizing that it's important to find ways to create well-being, mental wellness, um, even in lockdown. Uh, and to find ways to do that, and there are ways. Yeah. I see. So, sir, you mentioned mental wellness. Is there a, a difference between mental wellness and well-being? Um, mind and body are really two legs of the same being. Um, they go together. If the body uh, is not functioning well, that affects the functioning of the brain and the mind. Uh, an example of that is nutrition, where research has shown um, that people who eat junk food, um, and we know that junk food is a cardiovascular risk factor because of all the trans fats uh, in those, um, also have a 37% greater incidence of depression and anxiety. So what happens in the body happens uh, in the brain and the mind as well and similarly if we're depressed that lowers our immunity mm. um, so it works both ways you can't separate them out so well-being means physical wellness and mental wellness together i see um so i believe that there's proof of increasing awareness in it in the importance of mental health uh, the WHO released a statement about it. Can, uh, can you tell us more about it? Yeah, um, the World Health Organization has said very clearly, and I think it's probably the most striking statement we could find on this. They've said, there is no health without mental health. So you can be as fit as can be, um, but if your mind is turbulent or if you're depressed or anxious or um, traumatized physical fitness uh, minus mental wellness uh, equals not good health, unfortunately. Okay. So their, their point is there is no health without mental health. And they go on and they say mental health is central to the human, social and economic capital of nations. And the World Health Organization considers that mental health and we would take it a step further and say mental wellness, which includes resilience and flourishing, optimal um, functioning, um, should be part of other public policy areas outside health, including human rights and social care, education, and of course the workplace. So that's the World Health Organization's perspective on the importance of mental health and well-being. Well. I, I believe that mental health issues is actually a, a very, the problem isn't, it's not a new problem. And I think that the youth is actually quite largely affected by this problem. 
So, so what can you tell me about the, the role of digital media in, in potentially worsening the, the problem of mental health among the youth? Yeah, um, there is research on that. And in a nutshell, the higher the use of digital media, the lower the level of mental health. Um, and in reverse, um, the lower the level of use of digital media, the higher the level of mental health. And there have been a number of studies done on this. So it's really important in this time of so social isolation and lockdown that young people who naturally sort of have spent their lives um, communicating and connecting and enjoying through social media and digital media uh, understand this, that uh, increased use of digital media has been found again and again to be associated with decreased levels of mental health. So we need to be a bit disciplined about how we use it, you know, and, uh, use it as we need it and schedule time with our friends and so on and not in an addictive way, just stay there all the time and checking and checking and, you know, online looking at things that don't matter. Um, but having human interactions, doing exercise at home, if we've got a garden, getting out into the garden or if we're allowed to go into a nearby park, getting out into that. Um, actually living a real life rather than a virtual life that contributes to mental health and well-being. Okay, 